Hello everyone. In the previous video, uh, we had started discussing the formulation of the torsion problem in terms of the Prandtl stress function and we had noticed or we had found that this Prandtl stress function uh, approach uh, using this chi, uh, the torsion problem can be uh, presented in terms of this governing equation del square psi is equal to minus 1. We had also found out this important condition that psi is equal to constant on the periphery and uh, uh, so let me just uh, box that. Psi is a constant on the periphery and we had also found out uh, this particular uh, relation for the torsional rig rigidity which is given by this gj. So we had this rather big expression. Now, uh, so let me just uh, box that also. Now what we want to do in today's video is to dig in a little deeper so that uh, we are in a position to solve a few problems uh, which uh, yeah, so we should be in a position to solve problems which are uh, which of course involve the circular cross section uh, and certainly uh, the main motivation of studying this chapter in this detail uh, which is to uh, which is to address non circular cross sections also so uh, what we have to do first of all uh, is to look at two categories of cross sections the first category is referred to as the simply connected region Okay, it's, uh, it's a rather uh, mathematical sounding uh, expression and it is, it is certainly that but uh, it can be understood uh, in, a, in a very simple fashion by just looking at a general example uh, which is to say that we have a cross section like this. Okay, so, uh, so one might immediately ask, uh, sorry about the spelling mistake there. Uh, one might immediately ask uh, as to what is the distinguishing feature of this special uh, uh, simply connected region. Well, uh, as far uh, as long as we confine ourselves to these two dimensions, uh, a simply connected region is one which does not have any holes in it. Okay, it is, it is as simple as that. So as long as we have a cross section which does not have any holes in it, uh, it is a simply connected region. So for example, a shaft with a circular cross section, with an elliptical cross section, with a rectangular cross section, those are all examples of cross sections which may as well be referred mathematically to as a simply connected region. However, if you have a shaft with a with an annular uh, cross section, then that annular cross section, okay, so suppose uh, we have a cross section like this uh, which has uh, a hole like this. And uh, not just one hole, it can have multiple holes. Okay, it can have multiple holes in it. So if you have a cross section like this, uh, then this cross section is no longer simply connected. Okay, so that would be referred to as a multiply connected region. All right. Of course, these definitions associated with the simply connected domain or the region, multiplex connected region or domain, it becomes much more, uh, I mean, you need to uh, be much more mathematically uh, rigorous uh, if you have to go to three dimensions. Okay, but uh, that is not our concern here. So, uh, first of all, going to the simply connected region, uh, uh, see, the easiest thing that we can immediately arrive at while considering the simply connected region uh, is by noting that there is only uh, one periphery present here as opposed to this multiply connected region where there are multiple peripheries. So you see this is a periphery that is the outer periphery. This is an inner periphery. This is another inner periphery. This is another inner periphery. Okay. Unlike that here we have only one periphery. So if we just go back and look at this condition psi is equal to constant on the periphery then uh, and we had also mentioned in that video that uh, because it is a constant and because the governing equation here as well as 
the definitions of the stresses they only involve the the derivatives of this frontal stress function psi uh, it really doesn't matter what constant we may add or subtract from this psi okay it can be any constant okay so since it can be any constant uh, perhaps it is uh, easiest to consider this psi to be a zero on the on the single periphery that we actually have here okay so what we really do while actually solving problems is that for a simply connected region we consider the psi okay we consider the psi uh, to be zero on the periphery and please note that this is the only periphery that we have here okay well how does that help us you see uh, our our uh, governing equation is del square psi is equal to minus 1 that remains unchanged by this extra condition of psi is equal to 0 why because you have to be very careful to note that psi is certainly not 0 over the entire periphery over the entire domain or over the entire region we are only considering psi to be zero on the periphery that's it so this governing equation it does not change next we had said that psi is equal to constant generally that's what we had found out that psi is a constant on the periphery and that we have just said that psi is equal to zero on the on the boundary okay so this particular uh, consideration that psi is equal to zero on the periphery that really helps us to zero in uh, on the boundary okay on, on the on a, on a very specific boundary so we are no longer saying that psi is some arbitrary constant of the boundary we are actually saying now that psi is, is equal to zero on the boundary and what are we left with really we are left with the consideration of the torsional uh, rigidity and that uh, is present here and you clearly see that this integration uh, involves the psi this integration is over the entire periphery and it does involve the psi so uh, can we not write this so let me go to the next page and write that again uh, gj is equal to minus twice g cyclic integral this is over the entire periphery x and x plus y and y psi is common you can see here psi is present here psi is present here so what we have is x and x plus y and y times psi times psi this integration is with respect to the variable s that tracks the periphery now because we have just now uh, considered our psi to be equal to zero over the entire periphery we can immediately say that this entire integration is going to be zero so all that we will be left with uh, in the final expression for this torsional rigidity is this uh, second term so this is 4g times integration of psi dA okay you must be very careful to note that this second integration is over the entire domain and please do not make the mistake of saying that psi is equal to zero here it is not this psi is over the entire domain this psi that is that is present here that because uh, our our uh, concern here is with this integration which is over the periphery that is why this first integration is equal to zero okay so now uh, we will just end up for the torsional rigidity as this first term is 0 plus 4g integration psi dA that's it okay so uh, for example uh, what we can do is as a very simple example we can take the uh, take the take the simplest of uh, situations which is a circular uh, cross section and there uh, what, uh, while solving that problem in terms of this frontal stress function what we can do is we can just consider the psi uh, to be uh, so let me just show that quickly so for uh, as an example a circular cross section so take the psi to be equal to a times um, r square minus x square minus y square and it is extremely important to note here that the primary motivation 
of uh, taking up this Brandl stress function approach is actually very nicely satisfied here because we have been supplied with the information that our cross section is circular in nature and in the very step first step of our solution procedure we are utilizing that information regarding the geometry we are not uh, so our uh, our uh, method of solving this problem is not based on some arbitrary guesswork with the uh, with the hope that one day it will give us some useful solution rather it is directly connected to the specific geometry which has been given to us which is circular because we are utilizing that information in setting this up okay so our uh, so our choice of this particular expression r square minus x square minus y square is governed by this information which is given to us that the cross section is circular okay of course this r is the outer radius of this cross section this k however is a general constant okay we don't know about this k so uh, what what we can do is uh, we can utilize this uh, governing equation to see what information it gives us del square psi is equal to minus 1 so basically this is saying that del square psi del x square plus del square psi del y square is equal to minus 1 So this is minus twice k and then again we have minus twice k equal to minus 1. So this is 4k is equal to 1. So k is equal to 1 by 4. Therefore, our psi is equal to 1 by 4 r square minus x square minus y square now that we have this expression we can very well uh, uh, try to find out the torsional rigidity uh, let's uh, let's see what it gives us so for the torsional rigidity we have the expression that gj is equal to 4g psi dA integrated over the entire area so this is uh, is like this 1 by 4 r square minus x square minus y square and see uh, if i have to uh, convert this to uh, so now i just want to write it like this a but if i have to convert this properly to a double integration over the x and y then uh, uh, we can proceed but uh, uh, i think you will all agree that it will be easier if I just convert from this xy coordinate system to the polar coordinate system. Okay, so in that case, we all know that this can be equivalently written as capital R square minus small r square. No problem there. And this particular dA that becomes pi pi r dr so what we are effectively doing here is that is writing this da as uh, as uh, as r d theta uh, r uh, sorry so da we are actually writing this as r d theta dr okay and uh, so i have skipped a couple of steps in between uh, this is basically just uh, a repetition of what you have learned probably in your under undergraduate days uh, engineering mathematics but uh, i'll just say it. so there will be a double integration one over r and the other over theta and because this is a perfectly axisymmetric situation uh, all of these terms will go outside the integration with respect to theta and that theta integration will be going from 0 to twice pi and that's how we'll be uh, ending up with this twice pi and finally uh, this thing will just uh, uh, give us a nice expression so let me just do it so this is uh, 1 by 4 and this 4 cancels let me just remove that so 
So this is twice pi capital R square R dr and please note that this is integration from 0 to capital R minus uh, pi spy 0 to capital R R cube dr So what we have here is basically r squared by 2 minus twice pi r 4 by 4. So this 2 cancels with this 2, this 2 cancels with this 2. So we have basically a pi r to the power 4 here minus pi r to the power 4 uh, by 2. So overall this becomes half g. Fire four. You can clearly see here that, uh, uh, or you can compare with what you uh, know from your undergraduate days, that uh, the J, the polar moment of inertia, that is half uh, pi uh, r to the power four, that matches nicely with what we have obtained using this frontal stress function. But this should not be the end of things because we do want to go to cross sections which are not uh, circular, and that will be using for that we'll be using examples. Uh, illustrated through the use of uh, symbolic Python and Jupyter Notebook. All right, on this note, uh, I'll end this video. Uh, and in the next one, we'll go to a discussion of the uh, multiply connected region very much.